the ICT manager Chris Musando was found dead in a forest in Kikuyu in Kiambu County. His hand was chopped off for obvious reasons. Chris Musando was killed for the sake of rigging or attempting to rig an election. And yesterday, NTV did a very interesting interview called Logging Out Msando. And from this interview, I noticed five mistakes that led to the death of Chris Msando. And that is what I want us to discuss today. The first mistake that Chris Msando made was going public in regards to his role in the elections. The very day he was murdered, he did an interview with NTV and KTN. In both media houses saying that the election is secure, no one shall steal the election. Much as this is true, personally I believe that if you are holding a very crucial position within the IEBC, such as head of ICT and something of that sort, your name, your face ought to be very private. Let Chebukati and Murjin Hussein be the faces of IEBC, but the rest of the lot should be private for their own security. The second mistake was the use of biometric access to gain entry into the ICT room. That is why his hand was chopped off, because without his fingerprint, you could not access the room. Instead, they should have used the same mechanism as that of a bank. When you go to the vault of a bank, the manager and the assistant manager must insert their keys at the same time. One on this side, one on this side, and they turn at the same time. So with just the assistant manager, you cannot access that vault. With just the manager, he cannot access that vault. So if any mischief happens in that vault, it means that both the manager and assistant manager were complicit. Because you cannot access on your own. And even if you make a copy of your key, your key is not the same as that of the other person. So if that room needed the authentication of two people, two or more, the abduction and the killing of Msando would have bore no fruits unless you now killed him and somebody else and cut off both their hands. And that is usually not very easy. Killing one person is easy. Two, or maybe three, is difficult. So I think it should have been Chris Msando and probably Wafula Chebukati. They both insert their keys and turn at the same time. So if you want to enter that room, you have to kill Chebukati and this other guy. And that will not go unnoticed in the international media. So they would have held off. But Chris Msando was a junior person in the commission. And his death barely made international news. We, we only had it here locally. The third mistake that led to Chris Musando's murder. He had a very porous routine. Because the day he was murdered, he left work and went to the club with a girl called Carol. She was 21 years old. It is my personal belief that during this time of election, we should not be hearing of Wafula Chebukati and any of these commissioners in 1824, in Quiva, in Claret. Those are dangerous places. Go there after the main activity has been done, which is the election, and it's done and sealed. So at this point, they need to be very safe with themselves and they need to avoid certain areas. The fourth mistake that led to Chris Msando's murder is the lack of security. Chris Msando was not guarded on that day. There was no security detail on his person. It was just him, that girl called Carol, and a third figure who is mysterious up to today and he must be the killer. He was caught by the cameras speeding off. But if they had placed security around Chris Msando, we would have questions to ask. We could ask Hilary Mutiambai, how was this person killed, for example? If he's supposed to be protected, where was his security detail? Was it withdrawn for malicious reasons? Or are they the ones who did it? You know, with security, some things become difficult. Even if you want to harm somebody, it is difficult. But he was not protected. The fifth mistake that led to Chris Msando's murder was that he did not have a firearm. I personally believe that if you are in a certain position where it could benefit some people to finish you, it is always best to have a registered firearm. 
you can get a desert eagle a cessna whatever it is just be protected learn how to use the firearm and have it with you at all times maybe if that was the case chris msando could have defended himself so chris msando made those five mistakes in my opinion he has no firearm he has no security he's out in a club at night he's doing plenty of public interviews when in my opinion he should be his role should be very reduced and his name and face should not be in the public domain so that those who wish to figure out who is the point person to access that room they should have a very difficult time and even if they find out accessing that room should be next to impossible if you need fingerprints you should need fingerprints of not just one but three or four other people you know but that's just my opinion uh maybe you guys have spotted something that i have not kindly just comment below uh, i'd really love to hear your opinion and i'm really hoping that also towards this election we shall not see any other sinister murder of this magnitude the dci ought to have investigated this and given us a report but the dca at the time resigned the next one was appointed george kinoti none of them has brought anything concrete instead they are busy looking for servers thank you guys do have yourself a great day and don't forget to watch that interview called logging out msando it is on youtube it was done uh, by ntv by a very brilliant journalist i can't remember the name but he did a very very good job he asked questions that i have not seen the dci asking or the investigative bodies and that was just brilliant work please just make some time to watch that thank you